All right, here we go. DeAndre Bonds, welcome back. Welcome back. Well, it's good to be back. And that intro, man, that's, they know, everybody in the world know what that means. Well, <laughs> DeAndre, hey. Yes, it's sir. It's good to be back, Vlad. Yeah, man, congrats on another successful season of Snowfall. Thank uh, you. Always my favorite show when it's on. When yes. it's on, and we were talking about this beforehand, I was watching it on release day of season one, episode one, and I've watched all the, all the way through every single episode as they came out. I always watched, love the show, huge John Singleton fan, uh, big fan of what you guys pulled together. Uh, an incredible period piece. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, it is. And I, um, I'm thankful as well, you know. John blessed me, man, before he, you know, transcend, uh, transition, you know what I mean? And uh, I'm, I'm taking uh, advantage of it every step of the way, man. Any opportunity in this show, I'm tearing it up. Right. And you guys are about to do the final season. Season six. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. I'm kind of disappointed that they're actually announcing that it's a final season. It's like, man. So many loose ends. Something gonna happen, man. I just feel it. I know it because the people won't want it in and again some more, you know, and you can't leave them starving. So they might come back up and, you know, finish it up a little later, take a break and come back. Oh yeah. A lot of shows do that. Yeah, we need the Scully backstory. Just, man, I'm with that. From your mouth to God is. There we go. There we go. See how Scully got to the the psychopath that he developed into <laughs> later on in the show. <laughs> yeah, man. Or go backwards to see how he came in. Right. You know, to build up and the, the connects and things. But yeah, that's that's a nice that's a nice vision. Well, I want to get into some current events. Okay. And the first of which is Kanye's White Lives Matter shirt. Mm-hmm. When you saw that, what did you think? I really, you know, I know Kanye, his shock value and the things he says meant for a bigger platform to express what he really is trying to say. You know what I mean? And when I saw him do that, I uh, I didn't even really take offense to it or it wasn't nothing, you know, white lives matter, black lives matter, all lives matter, however, the I know what he meant. Like, if Black Lives Mattered as much as all lives, why are we still getting murdered and killed by non-black people? You know what I mean? So we had to say, you know, we've been murdered and maimed and raped out here our whole time we've been here, forcefully robbed, uh, destroyed to the the uh, ability that they could take us, divide us, and conquer us. And this is what is happening again. But, you know, to each his own, as far as my concern, I, I know all life matter. I never had anything or have had anything against any other race or people. I think we all, you know what I mean, we all growing and we learning one another. And once we pass that step, man, we're going to enjoy one another and and understand the importance of difference, differences. Everything can't be the same. We be toe up, you know what I mean? But we got to respect come first. Well, I don't think in America there's ever a question of white lives mattering. Mm -hmm. It's clear that they've mattered the whole time, a lot of times more so than other races. And I think to me, the whole significance of Black Lives Matter was Black Lives Matter as well. Let's not forget about this. Yes, sir. We understand that, that you know white people are gonna look out for themselves and yes, yes. give each other a slap on the wrist every so often, but let's yeah. just even it out. So when I saw that shirt, I, I didn't like it. Uh, I mean, would you wear that shirt? No, uh, um, I wouldn't <laughs> wear, I wear white lives matter, but it'll have all of them, black, white, right, Asian, Hispanic, all lives matter. That's what I would say. But I have black lives as far as deserve recognition. Cause we we're getting murdered, bro, by police, by people, by the government, in the streets, you know what I mean? Like every every day. And nothing happens. The the judge just send them on their way with pension, I mean with pay, 
uh, they go silently and and retire and 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 accept get their pension and the people that they murdered and uh, you check their record and you see they been they need to get they they just do justice need to be served against the people that not justified in doing what they do. I don't care who you are. If you held responsible for what you do, it wouldn't be none of this, man. Well, yeah, and one of the the biggest examples of this, which is something that's close to you as well, right here in LA, was the murder of Latasha Harlan. Yeah. For those that don't know. Rest in peace. This is what led to the LA riots. People 90, think it's 92, Rodney King. 90, 92, I think. 90, not, not yet, 91, 91, 92, yeah, yeah something not, like yeah. that. Oh, yeah. You know, because everyone, I mean, Rodney King ultimately led to the to the riots themselves, but what what was boiling up to that point was the Latasha Harlan story. Yes, sir. This was a little black girl who was in a store that was gonna buy some juice. I guess she put the juice in her bag and she had the money in her hand to go pay. There was a Korean female shopkeeper yeah. that accused her of stealing. Some words were exchanged. And the woman pulled out a gun and shot Latasha in the back and killed her. Yeah, that's that's murder. And got off. And she went to court. And, and this was the crazy part to me. She was found guilty by the jury. The jury looked at the evidence and said, this woman is guilty of murder. And the judge. Right. That happened in my, on, on me, dismissed everything the jury said. When you have a jury trial, the jury is supposed to dictate the punishment, not the judge. That's where people that don't know the law, we go wrong. Because I didn't know the law then. I was just happy to get through, you know, and be found not guilty of murder. Period. Manslaughter, yeah, I accept that. Shit happened. I mean, excuse my language. It happened, and I got to be responsible for that. And I was willing, and and I took um, responsibility for my action. That woman didn't get a day in jail. That made my blood boil back then. I was, what, 15, 16? Yeah. I was looting, burning. I wanted to do a lot because I was frustrated. And my people just, like, are not recognized as people in this country. And the, the mass... Um, the success of this country, the brilliance and greatness of this country was built on our backs. And it, how can you not recognize that as a country, say these, these black people are so priceless to this country and its success that we are going to respect them and give them the, what they deserve. And that's respect, not, uh, a recognition, a thankful, being thankful to you know the 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 work, man, and we we this this place would be out of this world, man. We'd be in, in on the moon already, or Mars. Well, yeah, I mean, the judge decided to go against the jury's wishes and give the woman probation for a murder, and that what set off L.A. in terms of a very tense atmosphere. So then, when Rodney King, after the Latasha Harlan incident, the cops were found not guilty for the beating of Rodney King. That's when all hell broke loose and the riots happened in L.A. And you were right there involved. Man, absolutely. I, was, I mean, this is part of our culture at that time. This was, his, this was history. I'm pissed off and I really don't even, you know, know politics or understand judicial systems and how it works. I do now from being a victim all these years and nothing's changed since then. But hell yeah, I'm a burn down uh, anything I could, you know what I mean? I didn't set nothing on fire, but I was going in there getting sh looting real life, and I loved it. I was happy to let that shit out. Yeah, I mean, how many days did you actually go out during the riots? Probably around three, before three the National Guard came in and told everybody to stand out, or they're gonna get killed, and they killed a lot of people yeah. that way. Did you actually see anyone get shot by the by the National Guard? No, Park I didn't. But no. they was they had tanks and real tanks and like real tanks. I remember I interviewed BG Knockout, who was out. Yeah, yeah, you know, during bro. that same time and 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 walking around. 
And he talked about sort of the camaraderie and the feeling of when it was happening. But then after the smoke cleared and everything else like that, he looked around and, and there's no more stores. Our, oh, yeah. Now, now you, there's no grocery store down the street. Now you got to go that, to a whole that, different that, part that, of town yeah. and there's no local shop for this. And now you got to go somewhere else. Yeah, I mean, it was extreme. Mm -hmm. People were getting pulled out of cars. People were getting beat up. Uh, stores were being set on fire. It was very extreme. Uh, you know. Mm -hmm. But it would have been interesting if instead of tearing up, you yeah, know, it was because dumb. It was dumb. Tearing like, in up, retrospect, you know, we people's all own that. neighborhoods. What if they went to Simi Valley? In, in retrospect, we all knew that. You know, because everyone now had cars. That we want to go shopping shit after we didn't. All the goods we stole, we ate them all, right? <laughs> or did whatever. So right. now we need to go shopping. And we got to drive, you know what I'm saying, way out to Hollywood, damn near, to go grocery shop. I mean, after the, the smoke cleared, did you feel a little bad over in terms of what happened overall, in terms of the community and how the community itself is going to be affected by the, by the riot? I didn't know that at first, but afterwards, and I saw that, yeah, it did hit me. Like, damn, we should have did something different. We should have been a little more organized a little more you know channeling this anger to where we can express it and at the same time it won't be detrimental to our community or our people and, and we can get some 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 actions done mm -hmm. and but it, it's always like that and it never happened so it's like what do you expect from a people that are not recognized as people I mean, Tupac spoke about Latasha in his songs, uh, Thug's Mansion. He said, a little Latasha show grown, tell the lady in the liquor store that she's forgiven, so come home. Yeah. You don't actually right. want to forgive that woman, though. Hell no. I don't I don't even care about her. Like, she didn't care about that, that child. She didn't think before she did that. She felt like she was empowered or privileged to be able to kill that baby. For no reason, that child hasn't lived since that time, and 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 it, it, it's crazy. This lady, she didn't do no time. Kim, I think her name was, or something. Yeah, Sue Kim, or whatever her name was. I call her. I say was because she's not a. Uh, I, I don't even think about that. I let it go. Wherever she is, I hope she living as long as she could. Yeah, her name is uh, Soon Ja Du. Soon Ja Du. Yeah, a Korean woman. Yeah. She was 51 years old at the time. Where's she at now? I mean, let me see. If she was 51 and uh, this happened in what, 91? This is 30 years. I mean, she's probably in her 80s if she's still alive. <laughs> I hope she is. I hope she make it to 800. Because, hmm. you know, that's a um, that's a curse. When God keep you here, that's because He punishing you. He ain't gonna let you just get away that fact. Death is a blessing to many, whether we understand that or not. Because you know God Almighty got the power over life and death. So if He allowed the happiness for a reason, hopefully something that will prick the consciousness of people. It don't seem it's happening. So he putting things and doing things that maybe people will re realize and recognize, you know, God got these black people backs. No matter what, they we his people. Yeah, we are. And so is everybody that choose to be. If you don't choose to be that and don't got the will to do that, he can't help you. He can't show you. You're not going to be uh, attentive to his laws and ways and principles. That's on you. You have to answer for that. Now, when it's forcefully done against other people, like imagine like the, the cop just, uh, was it a cop? Somebody just had some a liquor store robbery and an Asian man got killed by somebody, a black man, I think it was or a Hispanic man, or whatever it was, but they went in to rob the store and shot the aid, and he was giving up his money. We, we understand that is not right. You are not supposed to do that. But people doing that shit 
because it been done to him, man. It's like, how many times we going to die and not fight? How many times we going to go through this and not scream and shout out against it? Like, I'm tired, bro. I'm fed up. Yeah, you're talking about the Highland Park uh, liquor store. Well, it just happened. It just happened. A 69-year-old man, I guess, tried to stop four teenagers from shoplifting uh, a case of beer. One of them hit him in the head with a scooter. See what I'm saying? And killed him. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. But how can we feel remorse? And it's been done to us continuously. Well, Pac also talked about her, uh, Latasha, that is, in I Wonder If Heaven Got a Ghetto. He said, tell me what's a black life worth. A bottle of juice is no excuse. The truth hurts. And even when you take the shit, uh, move, move counties, get a lawyer. You can't shake the shit. Ask Rodney Latasha many more. Facts. <laughs> How much is a black life worth? A bottle, a of, bottle juice. of juice. No excuse. Truth hurts. How much is a white life worth? A bottle of juice, no excuse. How much is an Asian life? You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. If it go for one, it gotta be for everybody. If no life matters, then let's say ain't don't shit matter, let's let's handle it. And get see who, you know, what is and what isn't. Well, uh Kanye went on Twitter. He said, I'm a bit sleepy tonight, but when I wake up, I'm going death con three on Jewish people. That's the funny thing is I actually can't be anti-Semitic because black people are actually Jews also. You guys have toyed with me and tried to blackball anyone who opposes your agenda. It has, like I say, he say things to open up a bigger platform to create a conversation. If not conversation, what is the purpose for him saying that? As if he cares about, I don't even think Kanye care about black lives myself because we ain't received nothing from him to help us grow and come up out of this, you know what I mean? And you's a multi-billionaire. What is a what is a billionaire that don't help his people? Nothing. Broke. You broke. And you can't take it with you. So you broke mentally, spiritually, and your finances ain't working for your people, man. Come on, man. We got people in our ancestry from our ancestry that have laid down their lives, not no money, they didn't have nothing, they put their life, they, they children's lives, they wives on the line for, for us as a whole. And I could say many names, which I'm not gonna get into right now. Well, yeah, I, Kanye Everybody honestly- Everybody know already. Yeah. I, I, mean, yeah. I mean, Kanye thinks very highly of himself, as, as everyone should, but, if you really take a step back, what Kanye does with, you know, his businesses Platform. is and platforms is entertainment. Music is entertainment. Fashion is a form of entertainment. He's not putting his money into curing cancer or, you know, trying to help homelessness or, or whatever else. He's he's upset because his his Entertainment businesses aren't functioning in the way that he would like them to. But at, at the end of the day, I don't agree with the White Lives Matter thing. I don't like how he had Candace Owens with him. You know what I'm saying? I don't like her. I don't like what she represents. Uh, I don't like her either. Yeah. I wish she got the right to speak her mind. She does, but I don't, I, don't, I don't like it. I think there's a lot of self-hating and a lot of... Uh, you know, it's, catering, it's, you know, to other to other races real, and Vlad. A lot of that is just for 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 publicity and, and to gain attention and more followers and get people to, you know, shock shock value. That's it. I'm gonna start doing some way out crazy just to see how it works. You know what I mean? But don't mean none of it. Hmm. If that makes sense. You Why not? Lie your way through it. Why yeah. not? Yeah. I feel you. Yeah, but that 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 comment, yeah, it was disrespectful. It wasn't even he should have never said. It's a lot of people in general that have respect for for the cultures of other people, and you can't just put Jews down when we've been put down. What what two wrongs don't make a right? Yeah, and a lot of Jewish people help 
black people. Whether we know it or not, they might not show it on the news, but it's people, man, that really have consciousness, uh, consciousness, hearts, and respect already instilled in them. And they not tripping off nothing else, man. Yeah. And that's what that's what I'm focused on. Well, you grew up in South Central yourself. Yes, sir. Have you ever been to the Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles in South Central? Yes. Every one of them. Every one of them. PMB Rock was just killed at that location. H how far is that from like where you grew up? Two minutes. Two from minutes. All, like in in I because I stayed on 80th and Avalon. I stayed on 78th in town. I stayed on 116th in Avalon. I stayed in. Uh, you know what I mean? So I've been all through LA, Inglewood, Watts. I'd have, I've lived there. Yeah. So it's like, I know that Roscoe very well. I eat there, bro. I go up there and I literally have, by myself, sat down, ate, went with my family, my brother, we eat, we have fun. And it was never no issue. And to hear that that happened, I just took a, I, I was like, I, I could see probably why you in, like you in the hood hood right and I think you should be able to wear what you want you earned it that's yours my man had probably about I don't know people saying this is it probably could have been you know what I mean but that type of jury pulling up in the phantom oh he was in the phantom was he in the phantom of being the bands, yeah. We're talking about the PNB rock, murder, yeah. PNB rock, bro. And yeah. and just you know, a lot of people in that area don't have it like that, they don't even know what that is, you know. And then it, it fucked me up, man. Excuse my language. Um, because I was a young man, a up and coming artist, doing what he loved and being successful in it, and what he do, and for somebody to feel that they that he didn't deserve what he was, how his lifestyle was evolving. That's, that's, that's wickedness, bro. And I don't tolerate it. I don't condone it. And they got what they got coming. That's what I know. Yeah, it was a very sad situation, man. Um, I, I live in LA myself. And I've eaten at Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles, but not, not that one. I wouldn't, me personally. That's on Maine, Flo Manchester, Florence. I, you know, I go to the one in Hollywood. That's in a nice little, nice little Pico, residential area. Pico. I've been to the one in Inglewood. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Inglewood. The Inglewood they one is, is it's right by the freeway. It's relatively, you know, mellow. Peaceful. Yeah. People, people, I mean, I, 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 me personally, I think um, because I'm born and raised, I'm an L.A. baby kid, my, my L.A. community, my people, Inglewood, Wise Compton, Long Beach, I get love, man. Like, and I appreciate that. It humbles me. It makes me say, okay, this is what comes with when you're doing what the community respects. When you're doing and you delivering respect, how you respond to people in general. I love your work, man. I appreciate your support. Much love. Can I get a picture? Yeah, come on. Why not? Mm -hmm. Man, this is how you do it because. It feels right to me. That's why I do it. I can't say everybody can get down like that, but I do it because respect is key. And that's it. I remember I talked to BG Knockout. Yes, sir. After the incident. And he used to hustle over there. He sell weed in that area. He actually sent yeah, me a picture of him and, and he he his homies real. in front. And when he broke down to me, like I said, I don't hang out in that area at all, but he's like, yo, there's literally gangs all over. Man, you got the Swans right here. I right. think you got the East Coasts right there. Then you got the, 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 oh my God. You got everybody in that area. Right. Like, so you have to be cautious, yet people are in this damn time. If this was back in 92 or 96, oh, it would have been, it, it, It'd been war everywhere. Everybody getting shot. Everybody shooting. Everybody gangbang. You can't go nowhere. Somebody getting laid out. But it slowed down in 2022 as far as people aren't 
you know, just looking to have war, go to war. You got more respect for one another, more, you know, all right, he from here, I'm from here, as long as everything cool, or if it's beef, it's going to be personal. And the, it'll be an individual be It used to be I'm beefing with one person. I'm shooting the whole hood up. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's not like that no more. You got to be responsible now more for everything you represent in every aspect of life. As long as you're responsible for your actions, don't worry about nothing. Well, you talked about you go to that place and you eat there by yourself. Yes, sir. Would you go in there wearing all the jewelry you're wearing right now by yourself? Yes, sir. You'd have no issues? Nope. Either. Okay. But you're also kind of from there and you probably got some people that are probably looking I'm out a, for I'm you. A, I'm not going to go with uh, just like, of course I got, I'm going to have some. I'm going to have some people with me. And, you know, but we're going to be respectful, get in there, get ours, eat ours, and get out. That's it. Right. But you still said you'd have some people with you or you'd have something yeah, with you. I or keep, so yeah, all the time. Right. Meaning that you still acknowledge there's a level of danger of a robbery if you are coming in there wearing a bunch of jewelry. If you, um, that's anywhere. I don't care where you Didn't, um, uh, wasn't Kim Kardashian in London or- England, uh, uh, Paris. Paris. Did they care? No. I mean, listen, a guy got, well, uh, a guy got shot for his Richard Mill watch on Rodeo Drive. And it wasn't even probably a real Richard Mill No, watch. it was actually. Oh, it was. Yeah, he was a jeweler. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> it was, yeah. How, that was that 300? 200? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Richard Mill starts at about 250. Yeah, I don't wear Richard Mill. It can go, it can go up to about half a million. It can go up to a million, <laughs> couple I million. I just rock shit that look good <laughs> on you, man. <laughs> You ain't getting no 300. I ain't got 300 to get nothing. nothing. No jewelry, no. I wouldn't even buy a car mm. for 300. Well, that situation happened. It was, it was tragic. Uh, his baby mother had to see that happen wow. in front of her. I guess the guy actually even pointed the gun at her. Uh, PMB. P the PMB rock situation. That was his baby mother? That was his baby mother. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's deep, man. Yeah. I don't think she would have did had nothing to do. With no, that. no, she absolutely did not. I mean, well, she she had posted her location, you know, on well, Instagram. Who don't? It's a better idea just not to do it. But period. ultimately, period, period. When I'm out, I'm if out. I ever post a picture, like me and you will it's probably take a picture afterwards. Day later, two I will days take later. I, this picture will get posted hours later. Real life, <laughs> real right. life. I do that too. Real life. life. I ain't going live unless I I'm never go moving. live unless I'm like at my house or something. And yeah. even then I'm a little leery of it. But ultimately they caught the people who did it. The shooter was 17 years old. I guess him and his father had seen PMB Rock pull up. And that's when they started a plot. His father? Well, the father was the getaway driver. <sighs> that's crazy. I couldn't imagine doing nothing with my son other than everything I got to do for him never to have to do nothing wrong in real life. So the 17-year-old was arrested. The father was arrested. I guess the stepmother was arrested also. I don't know if she was like trying to hide whole him or whole family something. gone. The whole family gone. Yeah. Wow. Just wow. like that. Just That's like that. Sad. Over some chains. Um, you, could probably, you could probably resell those chains for a few thousand dollars if you're lucky. That's true. If bro. you're lucky, it don't it's make not, sense. Right, it's stolen property. It's high profile. You're not going to change. Your life's not going to change with those chains. Not at you're all. You're not going to retire and move you're to Belize not, and, and, not, and buy a mansion not, like with those chains. You're not going to be able to sell them, motherfuckers, anyway. That should have been the first thought going through somebody that that's thinking. You know, like, look, man, is this worth it? Like, what what's the possible uh, possibility? of me getting caught, what's that going to cause? Is it worth my life? Is it worth me dying, trying to do this? Is it worth me going to prison for life trying to do this? Hell no. No, it's not. What's worth you dying is raising your children right, making sure they have a, plat a comfortable platform and are secure. That is what's... The, don't take them and bring them back down. 
You know what I mean? And they gifts in and of they self. Children, man, come on. We men. We're grown ass men. We supposed to be thinking according to our experience and understanding of life and what's not and what is. That's how I look at things. Man. Did you hear about the situation in Jacksonville with a queso? No. Queso is a rapper in Jacksonville. He allegedly was involved in a murder. Uh, his father, I guess, helped him to somehow get away or covered up or something. So his father got charged with accessory to murder after the fact. Mm -hmm. I'd have done the same thing. So when everything started coming out, his That's father is now facing 30 years. This guy's facing potentially life. And his father is now testifying against the son. For accessory after the fact, that ain't even a real charge, bro. You could, motherfuckers panic. Your son come and you like, your son like, dad, I just did something. My first, what did you do? Boo, boo, boo. All right, well, we, I'm going to help you try in, in the panic. And I know I love you. I'm going to do anything for you. But the charges don't fit the crime or or the, the crime that the son did. The charges are for the father's way out. Way out. The right. son faced a manslaughter. Murder. Murder? Yeah. And the father facing, what did he murder? Accessory at the fact, but he had a whole bunch of priors. That's what I'm saying. He had a whole, oh, like he had a long, stripes. a long, you know, criminal Stripe history. Lit. So it's like, and the father's justification is, my son ain't saying nothing. He's not telling them that I didn't do nothing. I wouldn't do that to my own father. So now I'm being forced to testify against my own son. And it's a very ugly, sad situation on every level. Well, if it's already done, you already in there, I wouldn't say shit against my son. I do the whole You do the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, it's a tough place for a for a parent to be in. It's yeah, a tough it's a tough terrible. it's a tough thing. Uh because that's yeah, why you do so, want to protect your son. You've been protecting him your whole life. You gotta be that's why it's important to be a father in your child's life and be a father, not just claim the title or be called a dad. You got to be that, man. And you got to rear your children up real, really rear them up right. Show them the, the ins and outs of this. That's yeah. I mean, look, no matter what you say, if your son just shot somebody for some jewelry, you have failed as a, as a parent. Absolutely. You have not raised this child to the point. Where, First, where they would even real think life. of something They wouldn't this even dumb. think of that, bro. Yeah. My son, if I curse in front of you, I say, say that. And he, like, I said something. I hope you niggas don't unfollow me for this. And I said in front of him, I said, say it with me, son. He said, I can't say a bad word. <laughs> and that's, that's why I was like, okay. Yeah. So I changed the niggas to ninjas. <laughs> you know what I mean? I hope you ninjas don't want to follow me, but it, it's important because they seeing everything and you they king, you they God in they eye. They first thing they're gonna call a daddy. First thing they're gonna look for is daddy. So whether it's your daughter or your, your son, we have that responsibility. Or don't don't have sex with no condoms. Don't purposely create life and then be like, oh, it just happened. I didn't know what I was doing and all that. No, come on. I didn't make a lot of babies because I kept a condom on when I was starting off in this field and seeing all this stuff going on and the women and the, you know, I was like, yeah, no, I can't do that. Yeah. I can, I did it, but I, it's safe. Yeah. <laughs> What is it about L.A. that it just seems like so many artists lose their life? Uh, PMB Rock, Pop Smoke, Nipsey Rest Hussle. Rest in peace, man. Pop Smoke, PMB Rock, man. Uh, the brother from Compton, I think. No, I think it was um, just past. He was a rapper, too. At a, he was in a concert and got Draco the Ruler. Draco the Ruler. I was locked up with the brother, man. Oh, you were locked up with Draco? And... and um. And in like a, uh, it was a Norco. No, not Norco. Uh, what was that prison? I 
no, Delano, I think Delano. Mm -hmm. We was in Delano, man, and I met him on, you know, when they let us out for an hour or something for we set uh, the shower and watch TV and stuff like that. And he was very down to earth, man. He had a great spirit. Everybody was like, that's Draco, that's Draco. And, I, and we met. And I was like, man, yeah, yeah. blessings, bro. Keep going, do your thing. And he said, I'm finna get out and do his thing. He did his thing. Did his time, got yeah. out, and was blowing up. Yeah, I interviewed him right when he got out. Wow. Yeah, I no, seen that interview. Yeah, too. I interviewed him. I mean, in fact, I remember his manager wanted me to interview him while he was still locked up. And I'm like, nah, because he might say something that might affect his, cause his, he, his. he was facing, he was in the middle of a murder case. Yeah, so I'm like, I'm, yeah, not, yeah, I'm not yeah, touching yeah. No, it. No. I'm not touching it. That's I'm not, wise, because anything yeah. he's saying, he ain't done right. being convicted right. it yeah. did, it could come Yeah, I said, I said, I'm good. Once he gets out, I got him. And he got Real out. And, and I got yeah, him. That's and we up. did the interview, and it was a dope interview. And he started to blow up. Drake did a song with him. Sweetie did a song with him. And, and what was so strange about the situation, I remember his manager uh, talked to me about this, is that this is the first time an artist got killed backstage at their own show. Yeah, I heard that too. It's never happened before. Never. And that, Things happen before sad. the show, that's after the show, but not... Backstage at a show that you were actually performing at. Your show. Your show. I mean, it was part of a bigger bill. There was other artists, but, but I'm yeah, saying but he's on the he's actual the bill. He, he, well, yeah, that, that's, that should have never happened at all. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm, I'm trying to, like, see this for what it is. And um, it's dangerous, man, in their life, man. It's still dangerous, man. And... You just got to be very cautious and calculating in your movement. Like Pac said, every step I take is a calculated step. And it has to be, man. Because L.A. is the the, the godfather of banging. Mm -hmm. That's just, you know what I mean? And then it got worse and it got better when, when, when the um, Bloods and Crips came together as far as the peace treaty. And Cam, you know, they pushed that, man. And it was it was a wonderful feeling. It was beautiful. You can go anywhere. And then after that, you had cops dressing up like gangbangers, shooting at the peak. To, to Wait, that actually happened? That actually happened. Cops would, would put on, on blue man. and red rags. Are you serious? Nah, I didn't know that. Think about it. I believe it. you, but I... Yeah, no, that's easy to do. You a cop, too. You already crooked. Your whole force is crooked. It, it didn't. They, they did that, bro, and they, and they know they did it. I ain't gotta say nothing about it, but I am because I know it too, and I, I know it. So we'll go around. Absolutely gonna come around, and if you did it, you are gonna be responsible for it, whether it's now or late. Hmm. What if your son said, "Dad, I want to be a cop when I grow up." I'm gonna be like, "Son, I want you to be a cop. Just be a righteous cop." There you go. Take care of the people. Do what you are going there to do. And that's protect and serve. That's it. I'll be right with him. I'll be taking pictures with him. It's my man. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. nothing wrong with police. Not at all. It's something wrong with the system that, like, I think it's more so the judges. When they get a bad cop or a, a, a sergeant, a captain, see something wrong, get rid of that shit. Don't tolerate it because it's only going to make everything, what, one egg in a basket, one fruit in a basket destroyed all, rotten fruit in a basket destroyed a whole bunch. And it's simple. You're a weed smoker yourself? I smoke, bud. I love it. Me too. What do you think about Biden actually pardoning, I think, 6,500 6, uh, marijuana offenders? Amazing. That's, shout out to Biden, man. Yeah, shout out to Biden. Yeah. Round of applause Real for life. Biden. For, for, yeah. There you go. I don't there care who don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> he cool. Trump was good, too, when he, uh, he helped us in a way, you know what I mean? But at the same time, he was building or conjuring hate. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you could sense it and see it. He wasn't against us, but he was more for him and his agenda and the Trump black uh, Trump Lives Matter. 
What what was Trump? Maga Lives Matter. Right? Maga Lives Matter, <laughs> stuff like that. And, and that's good, but look, man, I ain't got nothing against none of them, man. They do what they do. If I, if I vote, I don't vote, I didn't vote for Trump, I vote, voted for for Biden yeah, and me too. Kamala. Kamala uh, two Harris. Less, uh, two less. The lesser of two evils. Yeah. Yep. Nah, I, I feel you, man. Uh, I feel you. I, I think it's great because at the end of the day, the country is moving towards federal uh, national legalization of marijuana. It's all the states that I go to. I got New my York, own LA, you know, California. Out, oh, you got your own uh, strain. Your own strain. Stacy OG, man. Stacy OG. And it's almost ready, like <laughs> December. That it's going. It's already blowing. They, I got the clone and everything, so I could. I'm going into it, man. This is a great. I love marijuana because it relaxes me. It takes away the pain. I got neuropathy. I've been diabetic, what, 20 years? So, mm. like, the my feeling in my feet has dissipated. I don't feel nothing, really. Um, my fingertips a little stay numb. But when I drink, like, uh, marijuana beverages that's infused with THC, mm -hmm. or I take Smoke. I don't like smoking too much because of the choke, but the gummies, oh my God. Bro. That's your thing? Man, okay. real life. It really like takes away all that. I, don't f I feel, I get my senses back. Dope. So Dope. I'm in it, man. I'm trying to do it. Well, when you mentioned Stacy, it's interesting. One of my uh, YouTube members, also true, uh, said, will the Jerry Curl ever come back? <laughs> Because uh, you no. have the Jerry Curl, right? Hell Stacey? No, I'm not doing it unless they another movie and they, you know, <laughs> well, they you remember pay me being for in that, LA man. where the Jerry Curl was a thing. I really had to get it. And oh, so that was a real Jerry? That wasn't a wig? That, no, they put me, they, they, <laughs> with the, the activator and everything. Wanted all that. I had to sleep with it with the bag <laughs> on every morning. It was terrible. My pillow, black, like breezy. <laughs> I got to do this for like, how long? About a month. About a month now, I, I hated it. Cut it all off bald when I was done mm. and had to regrow my hair and so it could be back somewhat to its real texture. Right, because you got to constantly moisturize it throughout the day, right? You got to spray it <laughs> the whole time, <laughs> right? You can't just, that's not a hairstyle that you just do in the morning and it lasts. Oh, look, every morning, bro. And you take a little pick and you got to, Kick it out a little. You don't want to pull the curls out, so you can't just go. You know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, yeah, that shit really. Yeah. Who, who was the last? Uh, G Perico, I think, was the last person that the really homie. tried to bring it back. Yeah. Well, I think he ain't. He, he don't have it. it anymore. No, he doesn't have it he anymore. He cut it. He cut it. G, come on, man. He's the last one. <laughs> the man. last of the dying breed. Real life. Yeah. No, I remember I interviewed him. We, you know, we talked about the soul glow jokes and, and yeah. everything else. <laughs> You go through the hood, you still gonna see a nigga with a jerry curl. You the you first person I've seen with a jerry curl since Easy E. Yeah. I'm, I'm dead ass right now. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, but like in my area, like they never went nowhere. Like it's. So, so oh, so in South Central, people still wear jerry curls. Like. Yeah, you'll see them, like, but then you'll see niggas joking on them and shit. <laughs> like initially, when I first got my shit done, niggas was clowning on my shit. You know what I'm saying? But, you know. Like I said in Dream Nigga, man. Nigga was laughing at my curl, but it's a small world because I'm fucking this girl. <laughs> and she thinks she in love. I think the Jerry Curl became most infamous with coming to America. Right, exactly. The soul glow. Right. Remember that? The motherfuckers was leaving the couch wet. Right, right, the couch. They got that, that was the scene. Y'all remember that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Your friends over here laughing on the side right now. Right, because they got off the couch and there was like the three West spots on the couch. Right. Right. And I think after that, I felt like in general, you just stopped seeing Jerry Curls as much. Yeah. That was like the turning point. But hey, man, it's dope. You bring it yeah, back. Yeah, motherfuckers joke on that shit all the time. I, I didn't hurt it all. But see, but you're old enough to remember how in, at one point, LA, like all of the main rappers had, had Jerry, Jerry Curl. Curl. <laughs> Easy E. Real Jerry life. Curl. Ice Cube, Jerry, Jerry Curl. Uh, DJ Quick, was that a curl or just? Curl. He had a curl. Uh, I, uh, yeah. High C. Remember, high he had a song C. called Leave My Curl Leave Alone. Leave My Curl Alone. You cut your hair. <laughs>
Yeah, right. Shout out to High C. It was man. it was a thing. MCA. Quick. Jerry shout Curl. Out. Eight had a curl. Eight had a curl. Shout I'm out, telling you. Bro. Like it was like Gangsta. everyone. Everyone had curls. You didn't have no curl time. though, bro. You didn't never had a curl though. In, never, in that life. was the first time. That was the first time. Oh. And after that, you said I'm done. Through. Yeah. I never went back. Uh, matter of fact, aren't curls like flammable? Like, didn't Michael Jackson's <laughs> hair kind of catch on fire? <laughs> he had a Jerry curl, right? Or yeah, something like that. Pepsi commercial. The Pepsi commercial. Hey, Remember hey, his his whole head got sparks. Caught. Yeah, the spark. A spark hit the curl and woof. Boom. Real life, man. That man yeah. That just seemed dangerous. You smoking a blunt. <laughs> you no. Know? He did. <laughs> no, he did it, but I'm oh, saying okay. that's all. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure at some point someone lit their Jerry Girl on fire from smoking some weed yeah. at some point. I I'm sure that you. happened I'll put my somewhere money. in LA. Yeah. I'd put money on it. Hell yeah, me so too. but but you don't you never see it coming back. For as a as a, as a, as a popular hairstyle. No. Nah. 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 Unless it's like I, I don't know. I can't see it coming back. You? Nah, I no, don't. That's it's too it. much grease. People don't want to deal with that. It's hot. <laughs> I mean, a spray, you got to bring that back too. <laughs> it's but you had them for a solid bro. month, so you know. You're speaking I'm for good. Actual. <laughs> I, I'd rather be bald, cut low, or let it slick back. Like now. Mm. Atlanta is going through some things right now with the YSL Rico case. Uh, Young Thug and Gunna. In fact, Gunna was just denied bond again, uh, which I believe is the final time. They're trying to push back the trial now. You know, what people are saying, like, you know, George Cheedy, who I interviewed mm. with the journalist down they there, is saying pushing back middle, trial. he's saying probably the middle of 2023. So you got 28 guys that are sitting in jail with no bond, uh, with 56 charges, and very serious charges That's a system. That is a systematic gentrification, hatred. 26 black people on one case? 28. 28. Come on, man. When have they indicted 28 white people? The mafia. Oh yeah, <laughs> but they had to. They had to. They were seeing like twenty eight people. That down right there. Twenty eight people just knocked off a hundred people. We got to get these. Come oh on, yeah, man. no, the mafia. They 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 would take a hundred people down at a yeah. time. Yeah, the Italian mob. See, yeah, but look, if it was the black mafia, oh, what? Well, it happened to the black the BMF, the black BMF. mafia family. Boy, that wasn't the first one. It happened to some Detroit cats before that. There was black mafia, and they were going through it all. They was they was really like pushing, and they they they. I guess the nation of Islam to them is a black mafia because they for they people, they come together to build communities, have homes, forms, food, uh, programs after school before, and that that wasn't right. Uh, the, the, they burned that, they dissembled that. The Black that, Panthers. Pa Black Panthers, then you got the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the first black like nation in America that was building and coming up. And doing things for their self. Uh, and Black, they, Black Wall Street? And Black Tulsa. Wall Street, bro. Yeah. And what happened? Burned down. All right. See what I'm saying? It's like, come on, man. How many times do you think that's going to happen and then not come to you? And then not come back on your people? In the word, God say, what's, what, what, what you do will come back on. The sins of the father will come back on the children. If God ain't a real man, why would he why would he be justified in saying that if it wasn't happening? And it you see the results when it trickled down and then the whole fucking people is cursed. Mm. That's from God. That ain't from that's from you, your lack of action, your unwillingness to say, we apologize, black people. We know we've been doing y'all wrong all the time. Your ancestors, it's about time for us to say, look, man, 
Y'all are a blessing to us. And we owe you more than we can ever pay you back. Period. Nothing else. Well, if you look at the case uh, in Georgia right now, rap lyrics and Instagram posts are all over that case. We went through it very carefully. This song from Young Thug, this song from Gunner, this song here, this lyric here, so forth and so forth. The governor of California originally signed a bill that actually restricts the use of rap lyrics as evidence in court. Doesn't mean that it's going to completely knock it out. No, I doubt it. You know, because I mean, at the end of the really day, saying yeah, if you're maybe, saying something specific that directly no ties that into it, happen, that it's still going to happen. But it, it, it kind of sets up a little bit of a barrier to it. Whereas in Georgia, they're like, we don't care. We're going to use every lyric that we could possibly use. Uh, do you feel that that's unfair to be able to use Absolutely. lyrics? Absolutely. Why is that? Can we go back and check uh, the writers of all these murderous movies that we were raised up well, by? But to be fair, okay, number one, if you're an actor in a movie, you're being told a script. What about the writer? When you're right, right, right. So you're on, when you're on Snowfall, that's not a character that you wrote. No, you were given that character and yeah, said, do, I "Do this on camera." Now the what writer about themselves, the one that wrote it, did not the one that wrote it. Now, but wouldn't you say that if one of the writers got charged with a bunch of crimes, and then they they could potentially take their writings and use it against them as well? That's what I'm saying. Right, I think so. Yeah, absolutely. If the guy that wrote Scully, come on, man, was charged with torturing a whole bunch of people, and I'm, I'm they I'm, might be able to use your scene as evidence against, in his case. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. And me, shit, and I acted it out, <laughs> and I did a great job. I would hope so. They be like, yeah, you really did that, huh? You was in, but no, I'm just being, um, yeah, hypo right hypothetical, now, but yeah, real life, bro. That it should work the whole system. Everything like your uh, Weinstein, Harvey Weinstein. He was doing so much, uh, and they finally got him because he's in prison somebody, right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Come on. And are you mad? Are you upset? You didn't expect this to come. Uh, it was somebody else, man. I just said, man, R. Kelly. You going You've been doing this shit all your career, and now you expect mercy. And you expect us to not understand. Let that have been some of my nieces or my daughter or my mother. And, and you got a blueprint for that. Like, you you really do that. Aaliyah was fucking 14, 16, and he was 28. Come on, bro. That's not cool. In prison, you they have been cut his head off. I'm telling you. Yeah, well, I mean, he's in prison right now. He's doing 30 he years. He ain't on the main line. No, he's in PC. No shit. That's a good place for him to be. Were you in PC when you were locked up? No. I did my time on the main line. You requested to be on the main no. line? Yes. I had to. They was going to try to make me go to PC. Okay. But I'm like, man, I'm not going to be locked around everybody to do anything and don't have no principles and more. Just pit me with the right, I mean the real niggas, and on me. I'm gonna handle my own. It's interesting, because uh, I interviewed Michael Thompson. He was one of the leaders of the Aryan Brotherhood in prison. I saw that interview. You saw the interview? Yes, sir. And just to note, this is not a racist guy. He actually turned against the, the Aryan Brotherhood and got a bunch of them convicted. Uh, you know, one of the things he had problems with was, you know, they were pro having a problem with one of the dudes that was snitching. They ended up killing the father and they wanted to kill the family. And he was just like, man, I, I didn't sign up for this shit. The original discussion, for instance, about killing Richard Barnes, Steve Barnes' father, uh, was that uh, his wife and daughter be assassinated and, um, you know, I was a part of that conversation. I was a part of that circle. And um, it went totally contrary to everything that uh, the brand was supposed to stand for and certainly what I believed I stood for by way of um, what a person would or would not do. 
And the taking of innocent life is bad enough, but uh, the very idea of contemplating taking a woman and her child's life um, was to so totally foreign to me that I argued against it. Ultimately, um, the only concession, I suppose, if you want to call it that, I got out of that is uh, they moved away from killing his wife and daughter to killing his mother and father. And ultimately what it ended up with was killing his father. And um, I was actually the only one that voted against that. So, um, yeah, it, it um, was very instrumental in um, my decision to step away from the brand. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm, that I'm, dude yeah. did that, man, and that came back on him, that karma. Yeah. But we talked you about. You want to kill some more people, some innocent children yeah. and women? Yeah, for it was, what? Because it, it, it was fucked up. Yeah. It was fucked my up. Life. Yeah, it was a powerful interview because, you know, we've always gotten sort of like, you know, the black, Italian, you know, even the Asian, you know, or the Mexican gangster perspective. Here's the actual white mm -hmm. gangster. Hey. You know, one of the heads yeah. of the biggest white gang yeah. in prison. And, Were yeah. you around the Aryan Brotherhood? Yeah, I was around the Aryan Brotherhood, the Mexican Mafia, the Black Gorilla Family. I had a, a BG uh, Black Gorilla Family as a celly. The brother was older, but he taught me a lot, like when I first got there. So yeah, I was around every all of them. How how serious is that? Like as a as a black man, can you go and have lunch with an Aryan Brotherhood guy? <laughs> no, <laughs> that's not it. You're laughing at me right look, now. Look, <laughs> look, not even with the Hispanics, you know what I mean? But on the low, because you respect, you have maybe talked to, spoken with, uh, listened to, learned from and with somebody and y'all got a cool relationship. You can do that shit on the low, like, right, but now like you'll make something and be like, set it on, you know, and your people, the, the person that you are being forced to look at as an enemy is not really your enemy. That's how you know when you break bread, you communicate, you listen, you learn, you grow. That, that, and I learned that. I got some essays and some, you know, some white homies that was in there that nobody, you know, knew, but they was respectful people. They accepted, respected, and I accepted and respected where they coming from. You know what I mean? And, and, and it's sad that I had to go, go through that, but then again, it opens your eyes to the reality, man, like, what we go through on the street ain't got nothing. That is, it's totally different from in prison. And, and that's why when the, the dude said he'd rather sign uh, Dick, he, he wouldn't even sign a Diddy for a record deal. He is Hispanic. He was a rapper. Oh, yeah, I heard about this. Yeah. yeah, so it's like that is ignorant to me because if you if you rapping and you want a platform and need a deal and a black man come to you to offer you that deal, you gonna say no because he black? How, how, that's like needing a blood transfusion or you gonna die. And you say, I can't do it because I'm Jewish. You feel what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Yeah. That don't make sense. God wouldn't, he give me that blood. That's why I made it for it could be transfused and you can get some, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So, so what would happen if you had a friend who was part of the Aryan Brotherhood and you yourself were not gang related? Not at all. I so never so you, you're not a BGF or a, a crib or a crisp, blood or, or nothing. You're just a they regular. They call me a, a non-affiliate. Non-affiliate. So here you are, you're a non-affiliate and you and your white Aryan Brotherhood friend decide to have some meatloaf together. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, it's still black though. Exactly. It's still white. It's still Mexican is still Asian and, 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 and Asians and uh, Samoans, they fuck with the blacks usually, excuse my language. And, but the Mexicans, they mess with the whites usually. Mm. You see what I'm saying? And they really could eat together, cook together, sit outside, well, sit on the same side together, but not with us. Huh. So there's a divide between blacks 
and whites and Mexicans? It's a divide between blacks and others huh. and Hispanics and whites. So the others could be Samoan, Asian. They they could eat with us. We could, you know what I mean? Sit down, watch sports, get t- tattoos and all that. That's where the divide come in at. You know what I mean? Well, one of the most disturbing parts of that interview with Michael was uh, he talked about an incident where they went to war with the BGF and he stabbed a whole bunch of people in the yard. And then he said, and I missed it the first time, but people were (laughs) focusing on this in the comments. He said, after the stabbings, he used the blood to re-keister his weapon. For those that don't know, that means that he took his, he had like a pocket knife to that was foldable. put it in his ass. He put it, he used the blood to lubricate that knife back into his ass. That's, 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 that's a savage. <laughs> Figure between 30 and 40 of them and uh, maybe at best eight to 10 of us. Um, but only two of us had knives. So Wendell and I stood back to back and they rushed us. And in the course of rushing us, um, 16 of them were pretty well bloodied. Um, matter of fact, it was a blood bath. And um, Wendell and I both used the blood from them on our knives to re-keister the weapons. He a beast. It's like a whole different world. It is. <laughs> right? There, it there's is. no reason to keister anything in no, the outside get rid- world. Yeah, I wouldn't even want it <laughs> in me. We got pockets. <laughs> yeah. You, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We got backpacks. When you're trying to get with it in, in the midst of that moment, he was not thinking of anything other than getting high in that, that weapon. Yeah. And if that's the, that's where it went, that's where it went. What? Now you're going to ask me, have I ever keistered? I'm assuming you didn't because you weren't involved no, in that I've shit. No, I've keistered dope before. You have? M- marijuana? What? I smoked every day in that, in that motherfucker. And you were keistering? Man, how you going to hide it? I don't know, man. I never and went to yep, prison yep, like yep, this. Yep, <laughs> whop, and then, yep. I mean, the first time you did it, were you like... I was, man, how I did was I end like, up man, here? What, what, I what remember life they did decisions a raid. did I make to end up where I'm shoving yeah, yeah, marijuana of course. up my ass? But it was about shit. You in the pen now, it's like three years later. You need that weed to oh, get Oh, so you by. waited three years until you did it. Oh, yeah. No, I was smoking in the county, but they pen here. I never had the keys. So now I'm buying it. I'm buying it. I'm buying it. Mm-hmm. So then I get to the pen and get the really buying weed. I was spending like three fifty a month on 300 a, a, a week on weed, bro. Mm. So I get like 450 ball, 350 ball. That's like a little and to go and it keep you and nigga time the police coming in right hey yeah hey, everybody yelling put that motherfucker right either cheek it or push it up in there if you really scared nigga yeah I remember China Mac he said uh because I guess it's known as a trunk right <laughs> that's what he called it the trunk the trunk that's where you hide things where he ass. at he he was he where was, he from I mean what well he's from New York Oh, yeah, they probably call it the trunk. Yeah, they call it the trunk. But it's the same. It's the (laughs) same, same thing, right? And he said that he has seen, like, you know, because word gets around, right? He personally saw, you know, saw, like, a dude would get a whole bunch of drugs, right, and keister it, you know, boof it, another word for... Boof it, it, all that, man. And word would get out that this dude got a bunch of stuff in his ass, so someone would knock him out and then reach in there and pull out the drugs. I ain't never heard nothing like that. Somebody go to the dance floor, visiting floor, and then uh, let's say they get the bag. The girl, whoever significant other, the boyfriend, whoever the fuck it is, right? Bring them the bag, and the bag is drugs, right? Like weed, you know what I'm saying? A, f- a finger of weed, a finger of fucking dope, whatever the fuck, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then um, I've seen. So what they'll do is like, if you know, if 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 motherfucker know that somebody coming through with the bag, he got the bag on him. He'll get knocked out, somebody will knock him out, boom! And then <laughs> put the glove on, right? And you go up in that ad. You go up in that trunk, boy. Go up in the trunk and and grab out whatever the fuck was in there. I seen that shit. 
I seen that. That was, that's you great. You see someone put a glove on and reach their hand into someone else's ass and pull something out and then walk away with it like it's a prize of, of some sort. Yeah. Tre- treasure. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. And it's covered in shit and whatever else, but hey, you can wash that shit One out. man's shit is another man's treasure. Literally. <laughs> They what's that Rikers Island? <laughs> Rikers, I think he was on. A, I think he was on Rikers actually. Yeah. They vicious. I heard about them. I did like. We ain't finna do that, man. I I just saw some crazy stuff though. Can you imagine? You sitting there, you just pull something out of someone's ass, and then you go go smoke, smoke it. it afterwards. Man, that's cold, man. <laughs> you really got to think your life fucked up at that point. You're like, man, it really was at that point, <laughs> but. When you smoke that shit, you gonna be good. <laughs> you gonna be like, I ain't even tripping no more. You be thinking about the streets now, but man, the things we go through, people in in prison, is second to nothing. On the nothing. Did you ever hear the interview I did with uh, Rico Reckless and Ewall Samo uh, talking about what happens in uh, Chicago jail? Cook County. Oh, I think I did. Your see homies that. are laughing right yeah. now. Yeah, well, it's called Savage Life. So what happens is, and Joe Rogan actually played this clip on mm-hmm. his show. <laughs> he said that dudes will knock you out, pull your pants down, spread your ass, and spit in your ass. So then, they then have to go and they have to report that you've been raped to your family because there's human residue inside of your orifice. They in Cook County Jail getting savage life. Phone up. They getting that savage life. Now, ask one who wanna ask, which one of you motherfuckers wanna ask what's happening? What, what's savage life? Well, I don't know where this gay shit started from, but this was going on. In Chicago, Cook County Jail, they will knock you the fuck out. Cold, knock when you, you out When you cold. hit that ground, you would hear this. Get, get that, that butt! <laughs> Motherfucker that gets that. Nah, the nigga that's fighting to be, get the butt. <laughs> Motherfucker gone. Pull your pants down. Pull your drawers down. Open up your ass it's and spin spit. your ass. And now your ass a bitch. Six people line up It'd to be come niggas spin your ass. Spit. Niggas are spinning your ass. A nigga will grab a motherfucking soap. You got to choke, choke your ass out, nigga. Six nigga, different you got Killed in this bitch. Your ass a bitch. Now in the whole jail and no, it's going around. Man, folks, you got this ass spin in. Disclaimer. Niggas are putting ketchup. That. I wasn't doing that. Mustard in your ass. I wasn't niggas involved with that shit. Eat flame hot. I wasn't doing that Knock shit. Knock you out. Spin your ass. I, just, I saw on. niggas getting their ass spin in in that bitch. Boy, you especially up it. in the trenches. That shit Division now. Up. Trenches. That shit fuck. Spin in your ass, boy. That's the dungeon. I don't even have no words for that. I couldn't open a motherfucker ass and look in it, <laughs> let alone spit in it and go in it. Like, come on. This is... V- this is beast mode. Oh, this is, this is savage. Yeah, this, oh, this, this is demon goodness. time right here. Man, thank God I didn't have to go through none of that, man. Yeah, one of the things, well, I guess uh, in prison, I talked about this uh, with Michael, uh, one of the main income sources for the Aryan Brotherhood, along with drugs and, and so forth, is prostitution. Mm-hmm. I, m- I remember you asking. Yep. and we're not talking about women either. No, you're talking, talking about, about men. Men. Boys, men, whatever. Yep. And, and we talked about there, there was this really kind of uh, on Reddit, there was this instant, this post of this guy that talked about the situation called protective pairing. So essentially, he said, you know, he told a story about when he was in his 20s, he was young, good looking, kind of small, and he got put in a cell with this big dude. Oh, yeah, I remember that. And the dude started to rape him. And he became his protector. He became. It, it's, it's, but he protected him from other people. He wasn't passed around. He would have sex with them, but he wouldn't let other dudes. And he said, this is known as protective pairing, where you'd get someone who'd basically rape you, but they'd protect you against all the other inmates. Mm-hmm. And it becomes a thing. And, and Michael was like, yeah, we're very familiar with that situation. Protective pairing. The individual that takes him in, first he becomes a, what we call a cell mouse. And so he, he launders, he cleans up the cell, he cooks. He does things like that. But if he is in fact turned out um, to become um, a woman uh, in that context, 
um, then yes, he's it's, he's paired with that individual, and that becomes that individual's uh, wife. I've seen many of those relationships turn into um, extremely dangerous situations uh, because of um, jealousy, somebody attempting to push up on that individual's um, girl, and um, is killed as a result. Yeah, I never had. Well, I had some people come up to me to try to say, we'll protect you for for some money to pay them a certain amount of money. Mm -hmm. And I looked like, how the fuck are you going to protect me? I protect myself. And I never did that. I never had the experience that I had fights, you know, I knock motherfuckers out, a few of them. And then once you do that, they not going to they're going to be like this, this. Nigga ain't easy to get over on. I'm from LA. I don't need to bang to, to understand the, the the risk and challenges I've survived and knocking on my door, fighting, telling I ain't finna be from your hood, fighting. So, you know, to go to the pen and fight, it was more they ain't got no they got knives, but they ain't got no reason to, you know, come at you with them because you got knives. You know what I mean? You want to fight, we're going to get down, go to the bathroom, go through the back wall, head up. If if they jump you, they jump. I've been jumped. I was in the hospital, dislocated shoulder, both black eyes closed. And it's all in, you know, learning. What would you get jumped for? What did I? Yeah, what did you get jumped for? What was the situation around that? Jail? Yeah. Four? Yeah. Manslaughter. No, 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 no. You said you got jumped. You said, would that happen? Oh, in, jumped. In, in, in uh, prison? It was in, it was in a, I went down, they brought me down from the um, pen to the LA County jail. Oh, okay. And so this was like 05 and it was just wilding back there, man. The LA County jail wasn't no joke. And you know, some dudes saw me and was like, who is that yelling on the tear? Or they was asking, I said, it's D-Mac. Ooh, that's when I was going by my name. He was like, uh, Oh yeah, I'ma holler at you in the morning. Cause I was rapping on the tier, we was drinking Pruno. I'm feeling myself and just, you know. And um uh, in that morning when I went to sleep, woke up, somebody hit me on the shoe, like my not my shoe, my I, I don't know if I kept my shoes on, but when he woke me up, he's like, I need that fade. I said, I right, will handle it. We're gonna handle it. Right now, if you want. Man, the motherfucker left, came back, and started pushing on the county jail gate. So they got like a little system up in there where they click. If they could hit one of the gates, they could open the gates manually. But he had two other dudes with him. And they had gloves on, and I'm thinking like, I know he ain't finna push that gate open. Gate came open, they came up in there. I tried to get off and handle them, and got my ass whooped. They, at least they didn't stab me and kill me, shit. That's mm -hmm. what I was thankful for. Yeah. Went to the hospital, did like two months in that uh, recuperate, and then went back to the pen. I remember when I interviewed Chida Mac, and we were bringing, somehow the conversation got into this, where we started bringing up what ifs. And this one came out. This is a very interesting what if. You have your choice for the rest of your life. Everything that you eat is the worst prison food you could possibly think of, but you have access to sex with women or no access to sex, but you get access to the best food for the rest of your life. Which one would you choose? I want, for the rest of my life? Rest of your life. I take the food. <laughs> but but in the pen, the the part of the pen when you got sex, is that for the rest of your life? You can't have sex with her, or you can't have. Well, like I said, it, it's a, it's a what if. So basically, let, it's let's just forever on both ends. Forever on both oh, ends. Oh no, I'd rather have sex than the worst food. So you want sex, but the worst food. Yeah, so I'll every meal that. that you eat is just going to be horrible, but you could have sex. As long as I'm eating, I think I'm, you can't get no love. That shit, I did 12 years in prison and didn't get no love. So I did nine years, seven months, first time. Couldn't get family visits mm -hmm. because I had a spousal abuse when I was 18 on a girlfriend that I had. 
and just to plead to get up out of there. You know what I mean? But with that being on my record, I couldn't get conjugal visit. And I was married. So, oh, really? Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. You know, that's crazy. I couldn't I couldn't do so, nothing. So I for lost 12 years, of that. no sex. She didn't, I couldn't do and nothing. And bad food. She <laughs> fell off. She was like, I need it, babe. I said, look, I don't blame you. I did this to myself. Yeah, you can't ask a woman to wait 12 years Hell for no. you. Hell no. No, not you can't. Let, if she asks you, though, it should have some type of weight. Like, she should have to wait something, too, if it's genuine. But I didn't expect her to, and I didn't hold it against her. Well, here's the other what if that came out. 30 years in prison or having your balls cut off? 30 years in prison, man. What the hell? That's deep. I do the 30, man. Keep my, I want my body the way it's been to stay that way. 30 years. I you do, do 30, 30 years. I do 30, man. I do that. I do it over my family, any right now. You know you can still come without balls. You'll just, nothing really comes I out. I didn't never, I never <laughs> thought about that, that without my balls. You just won't man. have balls. You, you can't need get no your way, balls, You man. can't get anyone pregnant, right? Nah, well, but you, you, some you'll be free. Some people don't do that with balls. They can't. Right, exactly. So you do the 30 years. I do the 30, man. And you're how old right now? I'm 46. So you're basically, you would take a life sentence and keep your balls. Yup. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all can have my balls, man. 30 years, I'm good. I'll, I'll make wait, it work. Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. Wait, 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 wait. I, I would cut my balls now off I'm if thinking. I was thinking. 30 years, and I, but I could have sex in, in prison. Well, can you? Can I'm you? asking. I mean, you might be able to get conjugal visits, but then in your situation, maybe you're not, right? Because I, I wouldn't have been able to with, the, with my, History, like right, my exactly. Record. So you can have your balls, Damn, but you can't fuck crazy. nothing. I mean, I'd rather fucking eat bad. No, we're not talking about it's not the food story anymore. We're talking about right. 30 years in prison and keep your balls or be f completely free but have no balls. It's a, tough, it's a tough question, isn't yeah, it? That's real it's a tough, tough. It's a tough, tough question. I don't even want to answer that motherfucker. <laughs> they got to force me to do one or the other. <laughs> Cutting your balls off, hold, hold me. Or lock the gate and throw away the key. Don't never let me out. Mm. They got to force that on me, man. Yeah. I'm not going to do none of that willingly. Well, no, it's, it's not a willing my family. If it's over my family, yeah, I wouldn't. I would. I wouldn't give no cent, care, none of that. Have you and your son talked about what you went to prison for? Not yet. Not yet. I haven't. He know I've been, but I haven't sat down and explained the whole situation to him yet. I'm gonna wait. Are you kind of dreading that talk? I am. Like really? Yeah. Yeah, I am. Yeah, I um, bet. I don't want to tell. He don't even know nothing about nothing. Like he don't know nothing about gangs. He don't know nothing about. As he shouldn't. Yeah, no, he shouldn't. As and he I'm shouldn't. not going to uh, permit it or allow it. That's why I'm. Yeah. He with me. Well, uh, Quando Rondo uh, recently got uh, was involved in a shooting in L.A. Uh, his his friend, who I think oh, is actually yeah. his cousin, got killed in the car. They're saying the shooting was, uh, you know, aimed at him, but his friend ends up getting killed. After the situation, he publicly announced that he's throwing down his flag. He said, I'm no longer a rolling 60s crip. I don't want to have nothing to do with this anymore. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've lost too much in the process of trying to claim this, and there's really nothing, you know, there on the back end. So I'm I'm done. And... Certain people were applauding him for it. Other people were kind of clowning him for it. Uh, and uh, recently I interviewed BG Knockout and I brought the same question up to him. He goes, he goes, yeah, me too. He goes, I'm, I'm no longer a Crip. I'm renouncing my Crip membership. I'm not about that anymore. You know, he's in his 40s. He said, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not about any of that. I denounce it right now, man. Like I ain't with that shit, Vlad. I'm, I'm just like, one thing about it, that shit is in me. It's gonna always be in me, but. I'm living a different life, you know what I'm saying? Like if I was huh. about that, yeah, if I was about that, I would be I would be in Compton. You would be doing this interview from my neighborhood or some shit like that. Like 
I'm not with that shit, man. Like that shit is it's suicidal. You know what I'm saying? It's suicidal. It's, it's treacherous. You know, a lot of times you get killed by your own friends before, you know what I'm saying? Your enemy kill you. Like, why would somebody, why would I want to put myself and make myself a part of that? You know what I'm saying? The only, the only thing about me is I happen to grow up in it. It wasn't nothing that I chose. Like when I was born and I came of age, this is what my family was doing. You know what I'm saying? So I'm a person that really didn't, really didn't have a choice. You understand what I'm saying? To a degree, I didn't really have a choice. It was like, it was cool to do when I was a kid. I'm a 70s baby. It was cool to do in the 70s. It wasn't a lot. Everybody wasn't getting killed either. It wasn't no drive-by shootings. And, you know, the worst thing, somebody got stabbed, hit with a bat. You know what I'm saying? So it was different when I grew up in it. And then when it got crazy, I was already a part of it type shit. But I wouldn't encourage nobody to do that. Like, you, you yeah, can't even have a quality in... life if you, if you join a gang. Like, yeah. Like you limit you limiting yourself. Like why would I tell any any human being to do that? You know, as someone who grew up in, a, in an environment mm -hmm. where where this is a very serious thing, when people do that, what do you think? To how to the courage to say that they seen enough, they don't want to do it no more. Right. I think each have his own. Cause I wouldn't want nobody doing something that they ain't into or want to do or have a passion to do anymore either. I'd rather you just, cause you would be, you could become a liability. You know what I mean? So I think everybody got a right to grow and, 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 and see things for what they really are now. It's not the same time probably when they started banging or, you know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. a whole different era and time and, yeah, I mean, me personally, being in your forties and still <laughs> banging, still banging, still still set tripping on people, still being active, I don't understand. I don't, it. But I then again, I, I didn't grow up in that environment. I have friends who are like this. I mean, I you know, the, Trey D's never going to denounce being a crib. No, nah, hell no. Nah. I he, just know he, him. You he know, one for life. He he's there Shout for life. Shout out to Trey D. Man. Shout out to to, to Trey D. Real man. life. And but you know what? I bet you in a way he didn't denounce his 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 hood. He didn't denounce because he reared up. He grew up in that amongst, mm -hmm. you know, and he got a love and a passion for his people and where he come from. So Trady, I don't think will ever retire from that, but he a leader, he done left the bullshit alone. Yeah. You know what I mean? He don't He's not doing drive-bys. Yeah, exactly. he's, not, he's not asking people where they're from. Like he's yeah. not set tripping and, and, on people. And that's how BG knockout is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Once you've been through it, you graduate and you grow from it. You don't need to push it the way you pushed it, but you can help your hood still. You can help the youngsters in your hood, and they'll listen to you more and tell them the real. You know what I mean? So I see, I see them doing that all the time. So that's how they still affiliated, or, you know, but it's not, they ain't pushing it. They're not trying to recruit young dudes to come in and continue it. You know what I mean? They showing us a better way, even if you in it or you not. And that's how I look at it. And I, I mean, you know, them people, I know them, but real ones. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Well, Snowfall season six is actually being filmed right now. Right now. You've done what, one episode so far? I did one episode so far and I'm going back end of this month or the beginning of the next month to finish it. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. Usually when a show's in its final season, that's usually the green light to get some people killed <laughs> on the show. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now, I know you can't tell me whether that happens or not because I'm sure there's all types of non I appreciate you for that. Sir. Yeah, I, I know. I know you can't tell me. I know. I predict some people going to get offed. In, in this What's your season. prediction? I, I mean, shit. I, I can see the main character getting killed. I mean, he's definitely doing the most at this point Ooh. the way the way that season five Ooh. ended where he's hitting the streets again all his money's gone and now he gotta hustle and start shout out to damson man yeah franklin saint my franklin bro. saint exactly 
Yeah, who you were enemies with at one point, and now y'all kind of cool. Yeah, kind of cool. That's how the business go. Yeah, in reality too, you could be enemies and then learn one another and become best friends. Hmm. Right. You know what I mean? But I'm gonna leave that alone. That's yeah. I know. I know how it goes. I I know how it goes. I, I mean. When you see someone like Damson uh, Idris, who's British, yes, getting these shows, being the main character on a show with an American accent that he's mm -hmm. pulling off as an actor. Like, number one, can you pull off a British accent? It depends on where, how much I practice. I'm pretty sure I could if yeah. I got like a. So if you got if you got booked for for a show or. a a movie that was set in England, and I they're like, listen, you need to do a British accent if you want this role. I would definitely pull it off. You would pull it off? Yeah, because I would have somebody as a dialect coach. Aha. Uh -huh. And Damson has one. Shout out to my man. I don't know if I can say it or not, but. You talking about WC? Yeah, that's right. his dialect. That's his coach, man. Mm -hmm. That's why he's so hard. He's really yeah. got somebody assisting and helping him learn and the ins and outs of this. I mean, how crazy is it? Because I've never really been around Damson or, or Idris Elba or these guys that really pull off these accents. I had no idea Idris was British watching The Wire until like season five or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what they, I'm saying? They great actors, man. <laughs> They're incredible. You know, you're hanging out, you're doing these scenes and this dude's like got an LA accent. And, and it then turns cut, you like, how? And then it's like, suddenly he's British again. Real life. Man, that man's a master, man. It's mm. a young master, and he's willing to open up and be receptive to the the, the culture of L.A. from someone who is a, a, a god in L.A., you know what I mean? Um, and utilize it and make it right, bro. We actors. Mm. You got to have the ability, have the the skills to portray anything. People be on my head about lockdown to this day. Why did you play that character? I'm an actor. What is the issue with what I do? You don't have to do it. You not doing it. You're not even a part of what I'm doing. I'm, make, I'm making history. Well, well, you had a problem with it yourself. You told I me didn't you, like you, told it. you cried yeah, after I doing the rape after scene. After the yeah. scene on yeah. me, I didn't like it. Yeah. But that was that scene, the character, Everything else in the movie other than that rape scene was A1, acting, mm -hmm. perfect. I did exactly what I meant to do. Made you believe it and make you question me to this day on why I did it. Yeah, I mean, we had uh, uh, Amin Joseph on the show. Amin, shout out, bro. Uh, he talked about Amen. the process. Was that? No, Amen. It's Amen. not Amin, it's Amen. Oh, that's how you pronounce it? Yeah. Amen, Joseph? Yeah. Oh, my bad. No, you good. Sorry, Mr. Joseph. My bad. Well, he talked about um how when he was first starting on the role, uh, he was with John Singleton, right? Because he was there in the very beginning. And uh, they were basically filming in a role in the 60s neighborhood and how John Stockton basically was like, yeah, man, see those guys over there? Those are all role in the 60s. Like, you, you got you to gotta convince them that you're really about this shit. Like you're from New York. And you say how you just put him on the spot. <laughs> and he was just like, damn, man, we could have gone over this oh, before. Oh, you gonna oh, put me oh, right here in the middle. It's like, yeah. Oh. But I do remember the first time on set with him. And I've mentioned it several times before, but <laughs> John is like right here. I think I'm getting mic'd up. I'm getting mic'd up. And um, and this is the first day of shooting. It's the first day that I'm filming, I think it's me and Damson's about to do a scene, the first scene where he sends me, where he uh, offers me the brick to sell for him. And John's like, you see over there behind uh, Video Village? You see, the, see the motherfuckers over there? He's like, yeah, this, this, this they neighborhood, this, you know, and we was in, we in the sixties, right? Um, and so I'm like, yeah, man, we, I mean, you, you're in New York, you from New York, right? But you know, like this South Central, this, so, you know, you gotta come with it. Cause this day shit, 
So these niggas behind Video Village, like, <laughs> I'm like, where are you going to do this now, bro? We could have did, we could have did this the other day. Yeah. Right. So I just, I just listened to him. He said some other stuff and I was like, watch what happened right now. Oh, I wonder what he did. Take yeah. a vent. He, he had to perform. He, in front of every, in front of everybody, oh, wow. he had to do it, and he did it. And he out did there. it. Yeah, where that go? Right yep. There. Yep. Uh, well, it's interesting. Uh, speaking of, uh, you know, Uncle Jerome, uh, the R and B singer uh, Danny Lay. Uh huh. She did a tweet. She goes, uh, "Am I the only one who can't get into Snowfall?" And he actually responded. He goes, "It's a black thing. You wouldn't understand." <laughs> well, hey, if you don't know nothing about our culture and you don't know, you not going to stand. So, yeah, you pay more attention. Learn. <laughs> Be open to different cultures. Freeway Ricky, who I've interviewed, mm -hmm. he's always had a problem with Snowfall because he felt like it was his story. He said he even met with John Singleton before they started doing Snowfall and they were supposed to do, you know, do it together. John Singleton ended up doing it on his own and Freeway still feels a certain type of way about that. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, if he had a conversation with John and they came to a verbal agreement, then, you know, I don't know nothing about that. But what I know is that John told me specifically from his mouth that Snowfall came from him, his upbringing, the people, the character Scully is a real person. He uh, was crazy, but cool as shit. You know, all these characters that, um, uh, I'm a man's character, Franklin Saint, uh, was real people that John grew up with. Mm. He grew up in the Hoovers, you know, so he knew a lot of people too. And I think like he, I don't know who said it. Oh, he said it. It was more than one drug dealer back in the days. Like the Kingpins, it was more than one. It was a lot of motherfuckers moving weight. Yeah, but Freeway I think was the biggest. He was the biggest. Yeah. Did yeah. you know about Freeway growing up? I didn't know about him, but I heard of him. So you heard the name. Yeah, because, so, you know, yeah. my mama was a victim to cocaine. Yeah. And a lot of black people were victims to cocaine and to have it, you know, coming from your own people. I wouldn't give a fuck how much money you're talking about. Yeah. I love my people more. Does it bother you the Snowfall got no major awards? I, I, it, it, it does because I know we one of the greatest shows on right now and have been for the for a while and it's real and to not be acknowledged by you know the uh, the, the the powers that be the, the the other actors and actresses fuck it I don't care anyway I don't want no awards I'm doing this shit for history and for the paper keep your awards that shit ain't going nowhere with me. Well, you're working on a new movie, Irv Gotti, right now. Finished it. It's Finished done. it. Done. Made in America. Made no, it in America. Made it in America? Made it in America. How's the movie? Movie great, man. Yeah? Working with these brothers and sisters, and Irv is the, 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 the head man. For him to even reach out to me was a blessing, man. You know, I love my people that have faith still in my, my work ethic. And when I'm on set, I'm professional, 100%, no bullshit, and they love me. And this movie gonna be fire. Fire. Can't wait. Fire. Can't Funny. Wait. Fire. Right. You have a, a cooking show that I'm, focuses on- I'm trying on... to create one with my brother. Okay. It's called Diabetic Friendly. Okay, wasn't there a jail food cooking show? No, nah, that's just me posting on, uh, we posting like not only uh, jail cuisines, but just cooking, having fun on YouTube, man. Okay. You know what I mean? But it's gonna, we, gonna, we, make, we got a YouTube page and we gonna upload the content so people could 
see them see what we do when we just chilling. And it's not all jail food. We got we got the salmon burgers. We got the you know we're trying to be di diabetic friendly, but at the same time with the the YouTube, we can go crazy. We can eat a little bit of whatever. Well, uh, since our last interview, Coolio passed away. Yeah. West Coast legend. Super. I interviewed him once a long time ago. But I was a fan growing up. Real one, man. County Line was, was my shit. Like, this ain't funny, so don't you dare laugh. Right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, everyone knows him for Gangster's Paradise. That that wasn't even my favorite song. Uh, I, I liked uh, I like County Line. I like uh, Fantastic Voyage. Yeah. All, Coolio. Coolio, He man. was dropping hit after hit after hit, bro. Yeah. At a point, real life. So yeah. everything he dropped, we was falling. We we went with it. We enjoyed it. And he's a he's a gift to our culture, man, to music, period. Did you know him at all? I met him. I met him. I'm, I knew his um, artist, the 40 Thieves. Shout out mm. to my bro, Leak Rat and P.S. Uh, yeah, man. And I met Coolio through them because, you know, and Coolio's G he was beautiful as a person, spiritually, you know, and he was hood too. LV, all these people came from Coolio, man. And these is LA legends. Yeah, and uh, Coolio came up under WC. He was part of the Mad Circle. Mad Circle. So, you life. know, the whole thing is kind of all interconnected in the whole fabric of, of LA hip hop. Gee, man, yeah. that was a, that was, that's a point in time that, you either had to have it or you was going to get it, like rapping. Because, you know, they had it. They they had the skills to deliver, write, the sound. They know, You know what I mean? So people was learning and trying to come up. That's when I started rapping. I was like, man, I want to do this too. It never worked for me like I, like it worked for them. But I'm thankful that I learned. Well, final question. You talked about God throughout this interview. Yeah. You seem very religious. I'm not religious. I am God. Okay. I don't have a like a deity outside myself that I worship or go to. Nah. I worship myself. Okay. I go to myself. Well, if there was one thing that you could ask God to forgive you for, what would it be? I don't got nothing I ask him to forgive me for. I haven't done nothing that didn't wasn't justify so yeah so even the manslaughter situation you know no nah, nah, that wasn't me that was that person that did yeah. that i didn't go looking for nothing or put my hands on nobody yeah you got to be cautious of what you're doing selective with who you and who you do it to if i could take it back myself just like and i know i can't would i i don't i don't wish death on nobody man period so yes, I would take that back, but am I guilty or do I feel like I did something that I was out there looking and lusting and seeking? No, I didn't. I just booked a movie with Denzel. I'm in a beautiful place in my life, in my head, in my spirit. I'm like, yes. And then some come out of nowhere and go against you because maybe they not living that life. Maybe they ain't experiencing your joy and they don't know how. So envy and jealousy is a, is a, 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 a sin. Yeah, I mean, I asked that same question to Mob James mm -hmm. and he started to cry uh, on camera. Yeah. And he said, um, he said every day, he said, no one's ever asked me this question before, but uh, every day I think about all the people that I've hurt and how now I'm raising my grandson and how I'm, God gave me another chance to do something after all the bad stuff that I did. And he struggles with it. That's a different. But he, his life was very different from yours. Way different. He I, was I, active, I mob Pyro. Yeah, he was I, putting I, in I work. Wasn't doing none he was of that. doing drive bys. That came up to me. That, 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 a totally different life. But it's just interesting when you ask you know, different people the same question, the kind of response that you get, because he was like bawling in tears. That's oh, sad, man. I'm, I mean, thank God he has remorse now. Yeah. And I believe he deserves uh, forgiveness just like we all do if we acknowledge and 
accept what we did. And you know what I mean? So, you know, I'm happy to hear that the brother got remorse. Yeah. And compassion. Absolutely. Absolutely. DeAndre Bonds, man. Pleasure. Vlad. Pleasure. You know, you, you've been here, you know, between our last interview, but it's nice to actually sit down with you myself and actually do it another time, man. Uh, congrats on everything. Can't wait for the final season of Snowfall. Can't wait for I Made It in America. Yes, sir. And you got other films along the way coming yes, also? Sir. Um, I just, I got one on Amazon Prime right now that I filmed in Detroit called uh, uh, Power and Money. That shit is, is good, too. It's out right now? It's out right now. We'll go check it out. Power Real and Money. Life. Yes, sir. Everyone watch it right now. Power and Money. Yes, sir. On Amazon. Check it out. That's what it is. DeAndre Bonds. Peace. Vlad.